you can barely open your eyes. You're surrounded by darkness, dampness, and a terrible smell. Trying to figure out your situation by touch, you discover that the walls surrounding the space you're in are covered with some kind of slime and goo, and they breathe as if they are alive. It's strange because just an hour ago you were on a yacht, coursing through the open ocean, wind blowing in your hair. Is it possible you suffered a shipwreck? Perhaps your drowning body became a victim of a sea monster? Yes, that's exactly right. The slippery, slimy barrier around you are the walls of a whale's stomach. Is there a chance for you to survive, and more importantly, escape? First, we need to figure out whether it's even possible for a whale to swallow a fully grown adult human being. Well, according to experts, it's conceivable that something like a blue whale from the baleen subspecies could easily engulf a human being whole. The baleen is one of the largest creatures to ever have lived on the Earth. That's over the entire multi-billion year history of life on our planet. Also beneficial to your survival in this case, the baleen has no teeth, so he isn't going to chew you up before he attempts to swallow you. Most dinosaurs don't even come close to the size of this sea giant. Some baleen individuals, which, let's not forget, are mammals just like you and I, reach 115 feet long or 35 meters and have a weight of 380,000 pounds. That's roughly 173 metric tons. To put those numbers into perspective, this is the equivalent of about 40 African elephants. Just the tongue of a baleen whale alone often weighs as much as three tons, and its heart is bigger than a golf cart. 90 tons of food and water can fit into this mega animal's mouth at one time. It can also suck up to 11,000 pounds or 500 kilograms of plankton in a single slurp. With such parameters, this whale's mouth could fit not only you, but also half the passengers from a ship like the Titanic. But alas, this is where the swallowing act ends. A human body cannot advance further than the entrance to the whale's throat. In fact, this monster-sized creature has a throat normally no bigger than the diameter of a golf ball and literally cannot swallow anything larger than a small grapefruit. It's unlikely to ever be interested in something as big as a human being for lunch, as the animal's digestive tract is designed for much, much smaller prey. But if one day on a doomed sea trip voyage and subsequent shipwreck, you don't notice the approaching blue whale, then you truly very well could accidentally end up in its mouth. This journey would surely be unforgettable, to say the least, though in the end you may not be so overjoyed, or even alive. First of all, you'll fall into total darkness and start to frantically flounder among the gobs and gobs of small fish and plankton, which the whale is preparing for lunch. After the giant filters out the water, you'll find yourself in the midst of a viscous soup of all these creatures. Then he will begin trying to swallow all his food. But as previously mentioned, you simply won't fit into his throat. According to one Philip Mata, a researcher at the University of South Florida, the whale will probably just spit you out as if you were a cherry stone. However, even surviving this, true salvation will still be far away, literally. By that I mean after eating, a whale can dive as far as 650 feet or 200 meters below sea level. And if you don't have any special diving equipment with you, well, then at that depth you will most likely drown. Although lucky for you, these animals more often digest food at a depth of around 65 feet or 20 meters. In this case, you really will have a chance to survive if you struggle with all your might to reach the surface. And who knows, the whale might even assist you by giving you a farewell slap with his powerful tail fin. But falling into the jaws of a toothed whale, such as an orca or sperm whale, is an entirely different story. 
In such a situation, it will be that much more difficult to survive. Many of these animals are also pretty darn large. Individual sperm whales can reach 65 feet or 20 meters in length and can weigh as much as 110,000 pounds. That's 50 metric tons. The lower jaw of a toothed whale opens down 90 degrees, and their throat is big, really big, making it possible to swallow truly large prey and not just hold it in their mouth to spit out later. It's not uncommon to find entire bodies of seals and other animals in their stomachs, so they most likely would have no problem gulping down a human being. Unlike baleen whales, the toothed whales are armed with large, steak knife-sized teeth that are also extraordinarily sharp. Therefore, on the way into the sperm whale's mouth, there's a high probability of getting ghastly wounds or injuries from its terrifying incisors. There's quite a collection of documentary evidence where these dagger-like teeth have cut off the arms, legs, and sometimes even the heads of whalers in an instant. So, if you're lucky enough not to get cut going into the sperm whale's mouth, then you'll find yourself relatively unscathed, and you'll simply get swallowed. Then you will fly down the mucous membranes of the animal's digestive tract in pitch darkness, landing in the gastric sac with its viscous and fetid walls. The whale actually has four stomachs, just like a cow, and you are in the first one. And this is also most likely where your amazing journey will come to an end. Your body will quickly begin to disintegrate and dissolve in this deadly bath of gastric juices, which, by the way, contain the ever-horrifying hydrochloric acid. In addition, you will begin to suffocate, as there is, of course, no air in the animal's stomach. It is true that whales have gas pockets in their intestines, but these are simply gaps in the intestinal tract filled with noxious methane. These gas pockets definitely won't help you to breathe. Then again, there are tons of stories on social networks about successful journeys through a whale's stomach. Most experts, however, have dismissed these stories as bogus, merely being conveyed in order to attract attention and increase ratings. Nevertheless, there is some documentary evidence for several of these incredible, almost unbelievable events. In 1896, the New York Times published a story that reported about a whaling expedition near the Falkland Islands. The whaler's ship, Star of the East, lowered its boats and began hunting for their prey, a huge sperm whale. They wounded the beast with a harpoon, following which the whale tore up one of the boats and slipped away. After a long search, the team could not find the sailor from the sunken boat, a man named James Bartley. A few hours later, the ship stumbled upon the now-dead sperm whale. The harpoon injury had eventually proven fatal. The crew began to carve up the beast, and when they cut open the stomach, they found something big, unexpected, and certainly out of place. It turned out to be the missing sailor, James Bartley. He had spent almost 16 hours inside the sea monster and was unconscious but still alive. His hands and face had turned a deathly pale from the gastric juices. He was reported to have looked more like a corpse than a living man. His skin was covered in a thick net of wrinkles as if he had been boiled alive in a giant cauldron. The patient spent the next fortnight in a state of near insanity. He didn't seem to recognize any of his shipmates, nor talk to any of them for several weeks. Finally, at the end of the third week, the sailor came back to his senses and recovered enough that he was soon able to work again. Only the unnaturally pale skin on his face, neck and hands, those parts of his body that had been unprotected by clothing, was reminiscent of his time in the stomach of the sperm whale. They would always remind him and everyone else that he had once been swallowed whole by a leviathan from the deep and lived to tell the tale. The story of James Bartley aroused the interest of an English zoologist, one Professor Ambrose Wilson, 
in the late 1920s. He carefully reviewed the subject and came to the conclusion that the sailor really could have survived in the stomach of the whale. Wilson even unearthed another similar case from deep in some old archives. In 1771, a sperm whale bit a whaler's boat in half, swallowed one of the sailors, and disappeared underwater. After some time passed, the whale surfaced again and spat out his victim, Patui. The sailor was understandably frightened out of his gourd and quite badly scratched a boot, but amazingly escaped without any serious injury. That victim obviously wasn't to that particular animal's taste, but this doesn't mean others of the species won't consider other humans edible. So if you somehow manage to find yourself in a whale's stomach, the first thing is not to panic. The amount of air and therefore oxygen will most likely be catastrophically low, and your chance of dying from suffocation comes closer with every excess movement. Now, everything depends on what type of whale it is. It's quite difficult to figure this out well on the inside, so try to determine what kind of animal it is before it swallows you. Since there is concentrated hydrochloric acid in the stomach, you'll need to immediately find a way back up the esophagus. Otherwise, your skin will receive, as previously discussed, painful and deadly burns. You'll also need to move much faster through the belly of a toothed whale in order to get through all four chambers of its stomach. The real fun begins when your acid-burned body gets to the throat. If this is a toothless blue whale, you've got to shrink down to the size of a tennis ball to get out. Obviously, this is impossible, but it's the only way to get out, so I had to mention it. Maybe your pet cat or chihuahua might make it if you happen to bring them with you. If it is a toothy sperm whale, you can get out and into the mouth no problem, but after that you'll have to get through the phalanx of sharp, dagger-like teeth. When you successfully get through these, you'll finally find yourself free, but perhaps minus a hand or a leg, which would probably be useful at this point as you need to swim to the nearest safe spot. But remember, even getting into the sperm whale's stomach in one whole piece is almost impossible in the first place. These monsters, like us, really do masticate their food quite well before sending it on to digest further down below. In a nutshell, your chances of surviving are pitifully minuscule at best. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and if you haven't already done so, press the bell button to always be there on time to watch the latest, greatest videos. And don't forget to tell all your friends about us. As with Riddle, the more, the merrier.